the B-29 Superfortress, the bomber that pounded Japan into submission and became one of the most iconic aircraft in history. The only thing more eye-catching than this warbird, the nose art that was painted on her. So often though, these images are lost to time, but not if I have anything to say about it. Today, we have chosen five of the best B-29 nose art designs, recreated the aircraft with stunning detail, and will tell their stories. Let's jump in. One question I always get is TJ, how do you put together such gripping videos so fast and with such detail? And the answer is quite simple, using the sponsor of this video, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is my go-to for any kind of media that I need for my documentaries, stock video, sound effects, and especially video templates. I'm sure you guys can see it all the time in my work. If I need to showcase some vintage footage, Storyblocks. Epic music, Storyblocks. Or even something to show off nose art, Storyblocks. And with their entire library of media for just one simple subscription cost, you get unlimited downloads and access to all of their great content. Plus, since you get to license everything in perpetuity and without royalty fees, you can focus on creating great videos, not copyright issues. So if you want to save countless hours creating and get unlimited media downloads for one set price, head to storyblocks.com slash tj3history or click the link in the description. Thanks again to Storyblocks and now enjoy. For the first bomber on our list, we will go to a beautiful piece of nose art. Say hello to Teaser. Here we can see the lady of the artwork caught in just her towel, teasing the air crew. It's a unique piece of nose art that is interestingly in its own little bubble on the side of the bomber, which is a rare style. I have not been able to identify any direct inspiration for this art, nor have I been able to find any lookalikes. But let me tell you, this was not an easy piece of nose art to research. I actually stumbled across this photo with no further information, making the truth of what happened to her very difficult to find. And in case you don't know, a lot of times finding out the fate of these aircraft can be a lot more difficult than one would imagine. This would be because of messages just like this one sent to the 505th Bomb Group on April 2nd of 1945. To all concerned, I have received the following letter from headquarters of the 313th Bomb Wing, subject aircraft markings. Group commanders will see that all pictures of women are removed from aircraft of their group. It is with great regret that I receive and must, of course, carry out the above order. I realize what it means to those concerned to remove the women from their airplanes. They have somehow become a part of the missions that have been flown. Some of you have spent hard-earned cash for these women. All this I realize, but they must go. General Arnold and commanders down on down the chain of command somehow feel that the B-29 is a cut above the ordinary airplane and being such is not to be placed in the common class by pictures of nude women. Colonel Robert A. Ping. Because of orders like this, not only were many pieces of nose art washed away, but also the units that avoided receiving this order or turned a blind eye to the pinups all came to the conclusion that in order to keep their beautiful works of art, they had to minimize publicity of the women, and so pictures were generally not encouraged. So by 1945, oftentimes when a photo was taken, it was by a grounds crew member or a hobby photographer, casually and subtly, then kept in a personal scrapbook, never to be seen again for 50 years, leaving many pieces of famous nose art lost to dusty drawers. But further complicating things, oftentimes we don't even know what the stories of these aircraft are because we simply have a photo of the nose art without any further info on the plane or the crew. But fortunately here, I did find one important clue. When we zoom in on the photo, showing the serial number B2942-63526. And using this, we can determine that this B-29 was part of the 497th Bomb Group, based in Saipan. This was flown by a Captain Paul Shafrith, 
and on April 24th of 1945, she and her crew took off for a nighttime raid to Nagoya, a Japanese city known for the production of aircraft, from which they would never return. On this raid, Teaser was a part of a large group of B-29s. But because this was a night raid, we can see that her actual loss cause was never definitively determined, leaving no circumstances available, and that she was never heard from again after takeoff, with her loss reason being listed as possibly destroyed from flak, enemy aircraft, or even a B-29 collision. But while we do not know the cause of her demise, I did locate one interesting letter sent between chaplains in October of 1945, seven months later, that shed some light into the crew of Teaser's eventual fate. It reads, Dear Chaplain, the other day a couple of men from this organization came in contact with an English-speaking Japanese who told them about the grave of a B-29 crew. This morning I went with these men to see this civilian and the chief of police. They in turn went with me to see the grave and I got the following information, which I feel you should have. On March 25th of 1945, three B-29s crashed in this vicinity, two of which burned. The third crashed upside down with the bomb load intact. Several days later the Japanese army came, removed nine bodies and buried them in a common grave in a nearby cemetery. Later, when one of the motors was removed from the hole into which it had buried itself, they recovered two additional bodies. These were buried in another grave near the first. Before the war ended, civilians were not allowed to approach the graves. However, soon after hostilities ceased, several men erected a fence around the plot, placed flowers around the graves, and put up a huge wooden cross with this inscription in Japanese, the grave of brave warriors under American Air Corps. The only identification that I have been able to secure is an identification bracelet, which was taken from the body of one of the last two men buried. The name on the bracelet is Ben L. Harris. I have this bracelet in my possession and will keep it until you advise me what to do with it. If you think it wise, I shall be glad to write a letter to the next of kin, explaining how we discovered the location of the graves and how well they are cared for. Yours truly, Malcolm D. Hooker, Chaplain. As tragic as it may be, this would be the best information we would ever get about what happened to the airmen on board of Teaser. But if there was any consolation, it would be that this was actually one of the better outcomes for the downed air crews in Japan, peacefully and respectfully buried. The next bomber on our list would be a variant of the B-29, known as the F-13. F in this designation actually stood for photo, interestingly enough. This would be because these B-29s were outfitted with high-end recon cameras and assigned specifically to fly over the cities and ports of Japan and assess the success of their bombing raids. This particular F-13 was designed to the 3rd Photo Recon Squadron and would be named Poison Ivy. This is clearly another beautiful piece of unique nose art that is unlike any others that I have seen, and has no clear inspiration. But nonetheless, she is an elegantly executed piece of work and a perfectly named warbird. Here, from altitudes as high as 30,000 feet, the bombers of this unit would fly solo as they photograph Japan, hopefully far away from the dangers of flak and fighters. From the records that I have been able to find, Poison Ivy likely flew a handful of these recon missions, led by First Lieutenant William Runkle, the captain of their ship. However, on June 8th of 1945, disaster would strike. On this date, Poison Ivy was on a break between missions, possibly to check out some problems on board of the aircraft. So she and her crew were assigned to fly a short test flight. Early in the day, the props started up and they took off from Guam. The disaster that would come for Poison Ivy would be one that was all too familiar for the crews of the B-29s, engine trouble. The Super Fortress, despite being one of the most advanced heavy bombers of the war, struggled with many problems because it was so advanced and rushed into production. The most notorious of these issues was undoubtedly her engines, which were prone to failure and vulnerable to catching fire mid-flight. As Poison Ivy left Guam for reasons that I cannot clearly identify, all four of her engines seized up and stopped working. At less than 3,000 feet of altitude, 
Poison Ivy was without any thrust and in deep trouble. Her captain, William Runkle, took control of the aircraft and immediately brought her down, six miles from the coast of Guam. He was miraculously able to land her softly for an emergency ditching, but not without cost. In the landing, Captain Runkle and right side gunner, Sergeant Bruce Searby, would be killed, with the rest of the crew escaping to safety, and the beautiful Poison Ivy sinking to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Up next is one of my favorite bomber names of all time, Abroad with 11 Yanks. This super fortress was with the 499th Bomb Group, based in Saipan, and was likely named, if I had to guess, after 11 of their crew members who were from the US, and one who may have been an immigrant. But again, that is just a guess. Also noteworthy is that this is one of the only aircraft from this series that we actually have video of, with a clear film showing her on the runway in the Pacific Islands between missions, no doubt being filmed for her dazzling artwork. Now, this aircraft is an example of why we always do our research, because if we had to take the surface level information that we found on the internet, we would read that this aircraft is listed as shot down over Kyushu in July of 1945. But this is not actually accurate. When we look up the correct missing aircrew report instead of the incorrect one that was listed, we can see that this aircraft was indeed lost on April 27th of 1945 on their 24th mission, and the circumstances of this loss are quite fascinating. On this date, the B-29s of the 499th took off for a mission to strike Japan, as usual. But here, not everything would go as planned. As they were en route to their target, a broad with 11 Yanks experienced trouble in the number one engine, causing them to turn away and abort the mission, heading back towards Saipan. But here, however, the problem got worse, and the engine caught fire. The captain of the superfortress turned the ship towards the nearest island, and officially gave the order to bail out. The following is a word-for-word -word cause of the bailout from the missing air crew report. On the way to the target, number one engine ran away and would not feather. 20 minutes later, it had begun to burn fiercely, so the airplane commander gave the order to abandon ship. 10 seconds after the last man had bailed out, the number one engine exploded. The plane careened off to the left and crashed into the island. In case you missed that, there were only 10 seconds from the time that the last man, pilot Jack Boozer, bailed out to when their bomber, abroad with 11 Yanks, exploded. Sometimes this is all that made the difference between life and death. Unfortunately though, the fight for these men was not over. Unbeknown to them, the waters that they would land in would be vicious with many rocks and pounding waves as they tried to make it to the island. Because of this, 11 crew members survived and made it to shore, but co-pilot and second to last to leave the aircraft, Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Northrop, was never seen again after bailing out. An extensive search for him was made, but nothing was ever found. We can read what his probable fate was from the captain of the plane, who survived and wrote. Uh, considering the difficulty that I had in reaching shore, I have a very definite idea of what his fate was. I believe that he was washed into the reefs and surf by a very strong onshore current. The swells were running about 15 or 20 feet high and were pounding the sheer cliffs with tremendous force. I believe he was caught in the surf and battered to death. One of the most important aspects of this aircraft loss is that it was clearly a wake-up call to the crews and commanders that were involved. This crash and the dangerous experience in bailing out over water caused a memo to be sent out. It made a few recommendations to all B-29 personnel of the unit. The safety pin in the CO2 bottle needed to be clearly marked or removed for use at night. Always carry your knives, carry an extra signal mirror, stay away from the shore unless there is a good beach, and that everyone should be checked out and more training is needed in the usage of the one-man life raft, as well as operations of life vests and on which side of an island is best to bail out.
Hopefully, the loss of a broad with 11 Yanks and her co-pilot were not in vain, and something positive came out of their issues with bailing out and acted as a lesson learned for future air crews. In the number two spot, we will go to another specifically modified version of the B-29, but this one being what was known as a Silver Plate Super Fortress. Silver Plate was the codename for aircraft modifications that were made as a part of the Manhattan Project to drop atomic bombs on mainland Japan. These bombers had special upgrades that were made to their bomb bay so that they could safely carry and drop the bombs, which were much larger and heavier than their normal ordnance. In order to assist with this training and the eventual execution of this mission, 65 total silver plate B-29s were made, and one of them was this aircraft, B-29-44-27299, or more appropriately named Next Objective. Here we can see this gorgeous pinup girl with the not so subtle reference that she is the next objective. Next objective was sent from the United States to the Pacific, landing on Tinian in June of 1945. From here, she participated in training for the dropping of the atomic bomb, including three pumpkin bomb missions, which were actual bombing raids flown over Japanese cities but instead of actual atomic bombs, Next Objective and her crew dropped pumpkin bombs, which were large single bombs created in the exact shape and dimensions as the Fat Man atom bomb, but using regular explosives instead of nuclear. After the Japanese surrendered, however, with the dropping of the first two bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, her use in the Pacific came to an end, and Next Objective was sent back to the United States for use as a trainer. Here, unfortunately, in 1949, she was destined to go down when she experienced an engine fire, resulting in a bailout order from her crew. One of these crew members tragically was killed trying to exit the aircraft, and obviously, next objective was lost. For the final spot on our list, we will go to one more B-29 of the 497th Bomb Group. This would be Joker's Wild. On this one, we see yet another pinup posing on the playing cards and completing the straight flush as a joker. One of the interesting things about this particular piece of nose art is that I was able to locate a photo of her being painted on board of the bomber and literally drawing an entire audience to see her added to the side of the super fortress. Clearly, this shows us that nose art was not something taken lightly and on the airfields of combat air groups during World War II, it was a serious responsibility, and something even the grounds crews cared deeply about. This B-29 was a reliable aircraft for the 497th, and had been flying combat missions since the start of operations in November of 1944. But on January 3rd of 1945, Joker's Wild and 96 other aircraft were assigned to strike the city of Nagoya in a typical raid for this time high altitude daylight area bombing. This was similar to many missions that they had done before, but today things would go different. In this raid, the Japanese mustered one of the heaviest defending armadas that the Allies had yet seen, a force of more than 300 aircraft consisting mainly of Zeros and Ki-61 Tonys. The American gunners opened up in defense and hit the Japanese aircraft hard, claiming 14 kills during the mission but this would not be without their own losses. The Tonys and Zeros during this mission would claim five American B-29s, and one of them being Joker's Wild. Unfortunately, the exact circumstances of her loss are not known, as apparently Joker's Wild literally vanished in a single moment. According to the reports, no one saw her go down or even have any issue at all, with one fellow B-29 noting that no word was received from the aircraft after they said they were all right leaving the target. In addition, final contact is listed as a standard report saying that they were in no trouble. Because of this, no remains have been found, and Joker's Wild and her crew are still officially listed as missing in action. Because of the nature of how they vanished and being lost so quickly, I believe that they were likely almost certainly either A, shot down in a manner that caused a quick explosion killing the whole crew, or B, possibly rammed by a Japanese aircraft 
ending the tour of Joker's Wild. But regardless, after taking off from Saipan on January 3rd of 1945 and striking Nagoya, she and her crew would never be seen again. If you enjoyed this, consider joining my Patreon for great bonus content and to support my work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.